The views and opinions expressed on the Middle Class VO podcast are solely those of the hosts and guests. Any feelings hurt therein are an unfortunate byproduct of the quest for infotainment. Also, please be reminded that concerted efforts have been made so as not to put anyone's knickers in a twist. Having one's knickers in a twist is not an objective or goal. However, if your knickers are in a twist and it persists for more than four hours, please seek out a physician. Moreover, if anyone were to feel besmirched by any of the commentary on the Middle Class VO podcast, it would be purely coincidental. No besmirchment is intended. Please enjoy. Very excited. The Middle Class VO podcast is going to feature... Corey Disson today. He is a, uh, a motivator, a manager, a mentor. The three M's. What else do you need? I'm kind of nervous, Cab. He looks really scary. <laughs> he's intense. He's Bobby, he's a wigwam and a teepee. He's too tense. <laughs> wah, wah. Never heard that. <laughs> if you need e learning, we're just an email away. Corporate now. Tell us what to say Explain a video Imaging radio Slinging local cars Read an IVR No, we ain't no stars This is the Middle Class VO Podcast The Middle Class VO Podcast The Middle Class VO Podcast It is the Middle Class VO Podcast, Kevin Kilpatrick in Nashville, Bobby Maxwell in Cincinnati, and in the great Northeast, it is the Vice President of Propulsion Media Labs, the host of the Go Get It Podcast, mentor, and author of the book, The Voice Over Dream, among other things, Corey Disson. Corey, how are you, man? Dude, Kevin, what's up, my man? How are you, brother? (laughs) I do what I can. I do what I can. Is that that your real name, Corey Disson? Like, Corey ain't dissing (laughs) you. Bobby, yes. Uh, Disson is, in fact, my last name. It was cool before the word was cool. <laughs> That's great, man. Well, uh, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks so much for your time joining us. And uh, what is going on? Do you have more things that you need to do that you need to add to your plate? Well, I'm a certified workaholic, first of all. And uh, I like to stay busy. Not much of a, a Netflix watcher. So, uh, you know, I just like to keep my hands in several different pots. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like, I, I, I guess, I forever have to have a mission. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was going to ask you. That's going to be my first question is, how do you, Corey Disson, fit into this big world of voiceover? You're not a voice talent yourself. How do you wedge yourself in here? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, uh, probably wear a few different hats on this bald head of mine. Um, <laughs> you know, for the last 26 plus years, I've been... Uh, been the captain of this ship at Propulsion Media Labs, where we're basically creating between six and seven hundred TV and radio commercials a month in Pick a Market USA. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I guess I'm responsible for uh, not so much recruiting anymore, but at least uh, you know, overseeing the voiceover talent operation there as much as everything else. I got my paws on everything else there, mm-hmm. and. Uh, on top of that, for like the last year and a half, I've, I've really, uh, I've really gotten involved in trying to help and mentor voice talent, and teach them how to market themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with your with your clients that you have worked with, and as a broad overview, Corey, what are most newer or non booking talent missing these days? Well, I mean, uh, I would say the number one thing. Well, it's, it's probably like a one and a one a. They're mm-hmm. either not using social media properly <laughs> or they're not using social media enough. Somebody um, who is going to do this uh, as a voice talent, as a voice actor, has got to be good. They've got to be great. What in your eyes or ears, as it were, makes for a good or great voice talent? What makes a good voice talent in my ears? Well, I mean, I mean, of course you have to have the, the chops. You have to be able to perform. You have to know how to act. You know, have to know how to interpret copy. But the ones, in my estimation, the ones that are successful are not always the ones that are the most talented. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of talented voiceover folks out there that are extremely successful. But there are some others that maybe are a tier or two down on the talent scale, but are able to live very comfortably 
uh, because they, they know how to market themselves properly. And that's a key thing. You got to know how to market yourself properly. You got to be dependable, reliable. You got to be responsive. You got to have the right gear. But I think the, the number one thing that pushes you to the front of the line is being able to differentiate yourself from the millions of talent out there, or at least millions of people out there that call themselves voice talent, and you have to be remembered. You mm-hmm. have to, to brand yourself and market yourself so that you can be remembered and top of mind when it comes time for that particular voiceover purchaser to fill a need. A penny for your thoughts. So if somebody was, um, like we're talking about, somebody that is not really into social media, how can they take baby steps or how can they maximize the most bang for their buck? And by their buck, I mean time investment in social platforms. What is your recommendation for somebody that's limited on time and uh, experience? Well, the first thing is you have to make it a routine. It's not a one and done. It's not a set it and forget it. You have to be in it for the long haul. Um, You know, what I like to tell voice talent is your participation in social media is not like using an ATM card where you put the card in the slot, you press a button, and out pops the money. That's not how social media works. (laughs) Social media, when you're marketing yourself, it is more like a savings account. You put uh, numerous small deposits over time, over a sustained period of time, and you have to let those deposits mature and accrue interest Mm -hmm. in order. It could be six months, eight months, a year later. That's when you start to benefit from, uh, you know, all of your your labor on social media. What kind of clients are hiring talent from social media right now? I would say all types of clients are hiring on social media. I mean, especially if you're connected to them on the right platforms, i.e. a LinkedIn. I mean, what type of folks do you think are on LinkedIn? These are the people that want to do business. These are business owners. These are managers. These are advertising agency owners, um, automobile uh, dealer principals, uh, production house owners, e-learning agency managers, and so on and so forth. They're all in there because it's a business to business sort of super ha- super sale warehouse. They're they're out, you know, culling, looking for leads, looking for other folks that want to expand their networks. And you know, why wouldn't you be be on these platforms? There, there. It's it's almost like a cash machine if you know what you're doing. There's the facts. Yeah. So so the social media is the modern day version of the pancake breakfast and the rotary luncheon. So give us, Corey, a an example of a perfect social media post. Give me the platform. Give me what a voice talent should put out there. If I had the answer to that, I'd probably be making a lot more money than I have. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I will say that I can tell you how to get some pretty darn effective ones. Let me use that, that phrase. Uh, a few tricks I like to recommend, tips, tricks, techniques, are things like A, include um, a word that's in all caps in the first few words of that post to capture attention because, you know, attention spans are short, yeah. people are scrolling through their feeds a million miles an hour, you want to get something that will stop the scroll. That's a key phrase you'll hear over and over again in the social media landscape, stop the scroll. So if you have that all cap letter that says, the all capitalized letter word that says attention, or voice talent, or this is important, or read this, etc., that's key. Number two, I like to throw emojis somewhere early on in the post too because that's that's all part of the attention capturing strategy uh number three you want to make sure to have a compelling visual that's probably the most important you know video is preferred if you can't do a video you want to make sure to have a, a a still photograph if you can't have a still photo you want to have maybe a branded graphic or meme something with your logo your company colors you want to have one of those three things in the post. And then the other two things I would like to mention is you want to make sure to have relevant hashtags. And hashtags are, are, are topics of common interest on the different platforms. So you want to make sure to pick a hashtag 
that is well-traveled. If you're doing a post, and I'll just use uh, casino advertising as an example, you don't want to have a post that says slot machines are, and one-armed bandits rock. I mean, that's a little, <laughs> little obscure. You know, you want to have something, you know, casino advertising, advertising agency, um, audio production, video production, you know, phrases, terms um, that the voiceover purchaser might be searching under to find content they want to consume. And last but not least is if you can, you want to include a relevant tag. And a tag is different from a hashtag and that a tag usually connects a person or a company as opposed to a topic, topic or subject of interest. So if I'm doing a post about casino advertising, well, maybe I want to tag in the name of a particular agency that I'm working with or a, a casino client that I've done a spot with, uh, as an example, or um, the media director at said agency. You want to rope them into the post because when you do that, that person or company gets a notification that you've done that, and they might be compelled to reciprocate in your post, jump on the bandwagon, give you a thumbs up, comment, share it, etc. Hashtag jazz hands. Wow, that's pretty cool. So I understand, you know, how you get new followers, except for on Twitter. Um, you're, I'm, I, I'm, that's probably the one I really need to work on the most. How am I just reaching out and asking to follow anybody in there or um, explain it, Corey? <laughs> Boy, for getting more followers on Twitter, and I'm still working with that myself all the time, but what I found is, A, if you utilize some of those tactics in your post that I just mentioned, hashtagging correctly, tagging other contacts in your post, capitalizing words, emojis, compelling visuals, of course. But on top of that, you want to engage with other people you're connected to yeah. because you're not just connected to the people you're connected to. You're connected to all of their connections. So if you're commenting, if you're retweeting oh, yeah. uh, other tweets you know, on your feed, the people that those people are connected to are going to notice your activity and you're going to increase your opportunity to connect with those people. That sounds great. Corey, before we let you go, we're going to get one final thing from you, if you don't mind. Uh, it's a little segment we call Just the Tip of the Week. Would you give us just three, four, five of your top social media platforms that voice talent should be using? Get a little drum roll going here. Well, I mean, uh, you know, and I've thought long and hard about this, and obviously I'm on these platforms every day. I'm going to say there's really, if you're not on the following two platforms, you need to start getting on them immediately, and I'll do them in reverse order. Number two is Instagram. The reason why you want to get on Instagram is, unlike some of the other social media platforms where it's a slow kind of waltz, where you're kind of, it's a courtship, where you're getting to know folks over time and building that authenticity and that trust on Instagram, it's kind of like Tinder for for advertising. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, connect, message, jump in the sack. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm oversimplifying it, but there's a lot of the, the obstacles are removed in the, in the communication. It just moves fast. Sure. Um, and it's fun. It's very well-traveled. Um, there's a lot of people in our industry on there, whether they're they're on camera, whether they're voiceover people, whether they're agency owners. There's a lot of creatives on Instagram because they see the visual power in it. So that would be number two. And number one, it's not even close. This is by far the best social media platform you should be using right now is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is awesome. It's the Swiss Army knife of social media tools. It does so many different things from being able to be a portfolio to being a, a, your, your resume to being a blog tool to connecting in groups to sharing video content. It, you know, there's It's on and on and on the things you can do with LinkedIn. And like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, the folks that are on LinkedIn 
It's a business-to-business platform. Folks are on that platform specifically because they want to expand their networks and do business, whether they're looking to hire a vendor or to be hired. So if a potential client wants to get a hold of you and uh, has an interest in what you're willing to teach, where should they go, Corey? Well, the first thing they need to make sure is they need to have a, a wad full of 100s in their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, seriously, it's, okay, maybe it's a couple thousand in your pocket. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> now, if they want to get in touch with me, and forgive me, I, I couldn't help deliver that joke there, but uh, <laughs> if someone wants to get in touch with me, CoreyDisson.com, C-O-R-E-Y-D-I-S-S-I-N.com. Or, of course, you can look me up on the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, and all social. That's another one that uh, you guys should learn a little more about. But uh, that, that's the way you can get in touch with me. Happy to answer any questions. There we go. And if anybody uh, is needing a coach, go to CoreyDisson.com. Again, it's C O R E. Y D I S S I N dot com. Corey, thank you so much for your time, man. Um, Corey is a mentor, a manager, an author, and he is fully immersed in social media and all things voiceover. Kevin, Bobby, you guys are great. Anytime you need me, you just dial me up, you let me know, wind me up, and point me. I'm here for you. Likewise. Thanks, Corey. Ta-da. Wow. Great to have Corey on. Just so intense, so full of energy, and you really sense the passion. The man is legit, Bobby. He is. I'm still a little afraid, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, you can just tell he knows what he's doing, and um, he could really work with anybody and, and, and improve their, their bottom line. Yeah, you. Uh, when he's been doing it this long, obviously the passion is there. And if you, if again, if you want to uh, reach out to Corey, you can go to CoreyDisson dot com. That's C O R E Y D I S S I N dot com. All of his information is right there. Well, Bobby, that's another successful middle class VO podcast. Woo woo! Yeah. Oh, by the way, next week I'm in Hawaii. Do you want me to phone you from the beach? Oh, are you kidding me? Wow, way to go, Bobby. Way to go. rum in my hand and... Yeah, making us all jealous. (laughs) Yeah, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. (laughs) Just don't replace me. (laughs) Till the next time on the Middle Class VO Podcast, you can find us on... uh, You can find us on all the social medias. uh, Twitter, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. uh, But you can go to Podbean and uh, you can subscribe and then you'll get the uh, latest episodes about every week or so whenever we release them. The Middle Class VO Podcast is a K2 Media Productions production. All views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests. The McVob Jingle was written and produced by Kevin. Co-produced and performed by Chloe Dolandis. Additional engineering by Zach Zimmett. Bobby's Hair and Makeup by Rebecca Adlita. Kevin's Wardrobe by Slippery Pete's Fashion Emporium. All previous episodes are available for download on Podbean. For the Middle Class VO Podcast, I'm Tracy Thibodeau. I'm Lisa Lou Perry. Thanks for listening. And don't miss the next episode of the Middle Class VO Podcast. The Middle Class VO Podcast. I'm in Hawaii. Do you want me to phone you from the beach?